Hi there, my name is Matt. I'm the pastor here at United Church Online in Bath in Gunnisonville, Michigan. On behalf of my wife, my best friend Lori, we wish you the very merriest of Christmases this year, a hope-filled Christmas. It's one of the greatest honors of my life to celebrate the seventh year of celebrating this blessing of Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us, and doing that with you here. As we celebrate God's goodness today, and this Christmas Eve, I'm honored to just take a little bit of time to break open some scripture and explore it with you. I'm so proud to say that last year and this Christmas, in the midst of this pandemic, you've all come through to help others in such great ways. Again, you've made several families' uh, Christmases just really special that uh, needed the help with gifts and food. This year, we're stocking three food shelters, and tonight, the Christmas Eve offering will all go 100% to weekend survival kits. People don't realize how simple and powerful food is, and just allowing a child to not have to worry about where their food's gonna come from is so important to them. Jeff Gorsline is the founder and executive director of Weekend Survival Kits, which serves Ingham, Clinton, and Eaton counties. Forceline says an alarming number of mid-Michigan children deal with food insecurity, especially when they aren't in school. When the weekend comes, one out of four kids and one out of five mid-Michigan, or I should say Michigan-wide, deals with food insecurity, where they go home and they have no idea where they're gonna get their next meal for the next two days. Our mission is to give hope to hungry kids. So we do that by providing supplemental food kits for children who receive free or reduced school lunch at school. So sometimes they go home on the weekend and they don't have any food to eat, so they come back to school on Monday. They can't concentrate, they can't learn, so we want to make sure they come to school on Monday with a full belly so that they can really get the most out of their education. Note on your gift, Christmas Eve, and 100% of what we give for Christmas Eve offering will go to Weekend Survival Kits, and thank you so much for that. You might want to grab a candle as we get started today. So you can light that during the advent wreath. And also a piece of paper and a pencil. If you could just grab some scrap piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, that'd be great. Let's pray. God, on this Christmas Eve, we take these moments to gather together to set aside this time to remember the amazing gift at Christmas. The gift from you, Jesus' birth. The story of your love. You said that you love the world so much that you did this. Not only are you our creator, but you love us and gave us this gift. We celebrate this service with friends that help encourage us all year. And we thank you for them and the privilege of worshiping together today. We turn our attention to you now, God, and we, and we thank you for the incredible gifts you've given us. I want to lift up each person that's watching, that's participating, praying, and learning how to follow Jesus and make our way through this life. God, I know some of us are struggling, especially this time of year, and some of us are just uh, in full rejoice mode. But over all of that, I pray that you would give us each the peace of Christ, a peace in our hearts that's beyond understanding. We're thankful and grateful for this gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
our Christmas celebration, Jesus' birthday, we light all of the candles of the Advent wreath. First, we light the candle for hope, because Jesus is our hope. Second, we light the candle for peace, because Jesus is our hope and peace. Third, we light the candle for joy because Jesus brings us joy. Fourth, we light the candle for love, because Jesus is love. Finally, we light the center candle. This is the Christ candle. Jesus is born. Jesus has come. Jesus is our salvation. In Galatians we hear, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law. Galatians 4.4 4. And from the Gospel of John, and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John 1.14 let us pray. Great God of love and light, we thank you now for the light of that special star over 2,000 years ago that guided humble shepherds and learned wise men to the holy babe. In this very different Christmas, lead us now by the light of your love that we also may follow you to new life in him. In celebration of the birthday of our King and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Hi, I'm Deb Lishy, and it's my joy to lead you in the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, my name is Johanna, and I attend Gunnisonville United Methodist Church. It's my honor to share the Christmas story with you this evening. It's from the book of Luke, chapters 1, various verses. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called Son of the Most High. Mary asked the angel, but how could this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And Mary said, Behold, the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Tonight, I want to let the Christmas story in Luke chapter 1 speak to us about letting go of control. Now, if you're new to us, we're kind of a participatory church. It's more fun when we do things together. So here's what I'd like to ask you. All of you, I'm, I'm curious, how many of you would honestly say that there's something, at least one area in your life, some of you it'll be a, a lot more maybe, but there's at least one area in your life that you love to control. Would you just raise your hand up right now? Just raise them up wherever you are. Now, I'm imagining a few of you with two hands up in the air, and I'll bet you there are some of you pointing to someone else in the room. Now, listen, if you find yourself tempted to reach over and grab the person's hand next to you and lift it up, God just might be speaking to you tonight about letting go of control. You just heard Johanna tell a little bit about the Christmas story, a beautiful part of that. We're going to focus in on that story tonight. Mary, a virgin, is engaged to be married to Joseph. And an angel comes to visit her. The angel's name is Gabriel. Gabriel comes and says, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Now confused and disturbed is what the Bible says Mary is. Say that with me. Well, I just want to make sure you hear this. Will you say confused? Yeah. And disturbed. All right. Mary tried to think, what does the angel mean? What's going on here? And some of us, I think right now, have some of that emotion ourselves. We're confused about something going on in our lives. I, I wish this weren't happening. Um, why am I here? I never thought I'd have to experience this. You're, you're disturbed. I can't handle this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to figure this out. Why in the world is this happening to me? I never thought I'd be at this point experiencing what I'm experiencing right now. Anybody? 
I know some of us are there, and this year especially. So what can we learn from this story? Here's the story. Mary was confused and disturbed, and the angel told her, don't be afraid, for you've found favor with God. You'll conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him the name that is above every name. You'll call him Jesus. He will be very great, and he'll be called the Son of the Most High. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. So I imagine Mary said to the angel, hey, you know, this really isn't very convenient for me. Or this isn't in my five-year goals. I'm, I don't think I'm the right Enneagram type for this. Or maybe she said, I really don't want to be pregnant in my wedding gown. I paid a lot of money for it. And then there's going to be all these pictures. Well, what Mary actually said is, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Mary actually said, let it be. Can you hear the song? Let it be, let it be. Right. Listen, she didn't really sing the song, but she is giving up control. She's letting go of control. Mary's confused and disturbed, and she says, let it be. Will you say that once out loud? Let it be. Hey, we've been talking this Christmas season about traveling light, about letting go of things, or letting go of stuff, distractions, letting go of bitterness, so we can have more of what matters in our lives. On this, this coming Sunday, we'll talk about letting go of our past, Today, though, we're going to talk about letting go of control. Let's think about letting it be, all right? Today, though, we're going to think about letting go of control. We see it right here in the Christmas story. And I'm not a mind reader, but I'm guessing that some of you might be thinking, this is the perfect message for my spouse or for my mother-in-law or for my kids. And not about yourself. About yourself, you might be thinking, you know, I'm not controlling. I'm just aggressively helpful. Some of us really go overboard in controlling our kids, right? We want to know everything. We get involved in every little detail of their lives. Some of us, some of us really want to control our spouses, how they chew, how they dress, how they vacuum, how they load the dishwasher. Some of us want to control what other people think about us. You know, it takes us 37 pictures to get just that right photo to put up for Christmas Eve, and then we put hashtag blessed. And then maybe more seriously, we really want to control our health, our, our sickness, or our aging. But the more we desire to be in control, the more we fear losing control, and the more we try to be in control. So today I've got one big idea, and here it is. It's simple to know, it's simple to hear, but it's a challenge sometimes to live out. Here it is. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. Now that's tough stuff. Let me repeat. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. Now you might think when you hear the story, well, that was easy for Mary. You know, because we think of all the statues, the paintings, the mosaics, the icons, the churches, but in reality, Mary was ordinary. She was probably 13 or 14 years old. She was a teenager with hopes and dreams, a young woman with a limited pool of husbands to choose from. You know, there was no online dating or match.com. Mary may have had a little list like this of the things that she'd like to see in a husband. Strong, handsome, charming, drives a nice donkey. Good job, bright future. Strong hands, but a, a soft heart. Close to mom, but not a mama's boy. Bold, yet humble. Decisive, but flexible. Fit, but not obsessed. Big goals, yet easygoing. Well-groomed, but not soft. Makes me feel safe, but it's a little dangerous, too. He leads, but he doesn't dominate. He's confident, but he's caring. Loves old movies, walks on the beach, chocolate-covered strawberries, and most of all, loves God, a man who raise her children well. Mary didn't expect much. 
just the normal stuff everybody dreams of. Well, Mary probably wasn't quite that over the top like I presented, but I hope you get the idea. Mary had all these hopes and dreams. And then this angel from God says something completely different I have in store for you, Mary. Mary's confused and she's disturbed by this change in the direction of her life. Mary tried to think, what could the angel mean? Well, where is your life taken an unexpected turn? What didn't you plan? It's totally reasonable, especially this Christmas, to be confused and disturbed. Maybe today, you're just like Mary. She didn't know the end of the story, and you don't either. And in that not knowing, Mary had a choice to make between her dreams and plans and God's purpose and plans. A choice between her control and God's calling. Life has a way of leaving us confused and disturbed when we're not sure what the way is. So here's the point again. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. Even though Mary didn't know the plan, she trusted that God was doing something. And here's the thing about trusting God. When we surrender, we surrender everything we understand about ourselves to everything we understand about God. And then we continue learning, right? You continue learning something new, something new about yourself or something new about God or something new comes into your life that you didn't expect and some new twist in this plot in your life. And now it's time to surrender that part to God. Maybe you've trusted God with your past, but not your money. Or maybe you've trusted God for forgiveness, but not with your marriage. Or maybe you've trusted God with your life, but not your kids' lives. The more we try to control, the more we underestimate the power of God. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing what you can do, but it's not all up to you. Jesus says exactly this. He says, if, if you cling to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you'll find it. So you can see here, Jesus is talking about surrender. He's talking about control. Let it be. And this isn't a one-time event, right? It's an everyday event. I surrender today to God. I surrender this moment to God. God, I want you to be in control. I trust you. Every time Mary surrendered throughout her whole life, she saw the faithfulness and the power of God to provide. Here's the key. When we surrender, God provides. Think about it. Mary's a virgin, and yet she's pregnant. And now she has to tell her future husband. Now that's confusing and disturbing stuff. And Mary says, okay, let it be. She surrenders. And what does God do? God sends an angel, Gabriel, to have a little chat with Joseph. And Gabriel says, the whole thing, Joseph, is legit. See, here's the deal. When we surrender, it allows us to see God's faithfulness. We surrender and God provides. Now, fast forward, Jesus knows what's going to happen at the end of his life. Do you remember the story? He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's in mental anguish. He's in agony. He's praying to God, can you remove this from me? I, I, I don't want this. And at the same time, he says the exact same Greek word that his mother Mary said. Let it be. Let it be your will, God, be done, not mine. When you surrender, when we surrender, God provides. So here's a question for us this Christmas. What is it you're trying to control that God wants you to surrender? Here's an opportunity for God to do something special for you. And I'd encourage you to do this. Here's what I'd like you to do. Take a little piece of paper, a post-it note, and write down on that note, the burden on your heart that's coming to your mind. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's your finances, health diagnosis, fear, a hurt, a loss, an addiction, a guilt, a broken relationship, whatever it is, I want to invite you to write that down. And in a little bit, we're going to invite you to give what you wrote down to God.
Let's pray together about this. God, we bring our lives, our very lives, and these things we've written down, the things that you've brought to mind for us, the things that you've asked us not to control but to surrender to you. God, give us the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, the courage to change the things that should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish one from the other. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, just like Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it be, trusting that you will make all things right as I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life, and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Now, whatever you wrote down, I'd like you to take that piece of paper and put it somewhere in your home, maybe in the nativity set if you have that, or under your Christmas tree, or somewhere where you'll remember that you gave that thing or situation to God this Christmas. You surrendered control of that area of your life to God. What's really great in this Christmas story in Luke is the angel appeared to Mary. And what did the angel say then? The angel said, the Lord is with you. Another name for Jesus is Emmanuel. Matthew tells us what the angel said. Look, a virgin will conceive a child. She'll give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when you surrender those things, God is with you. And we will sense all the more as we surrender those things to God that God is with us. God being with us is what we share and remind ourselves at the end of this service, the lighting of the candles and the singing of silent night, the light of the world. God is with you. Now God can do way more through your surrender than you can do through your control. Whatever's on your heart is always better in God's hands. So whatever you wrote on that piece of paper today, it's better entrusted to God. We don't always have the power to control, but we always have the power to surrender. Let it be this Christmas. Oh,